Jake Wallace Simmons. Jake, firstly, um, just give us your overview on this. Um, I mean, it takes nothing in the sort of very small global world we currently live in for someone to see something somewhere and copy it. Is that literally what is happening here? Yeah, I mean, you know, America has such a such a powerful influence on our culture uh, that it's no surprise that its radicalism comes over here as well. And this is just the latest episode. We saw the contagion of Black Lives Matter, which was about the death of a black American in an American context in America, uh, sparking riots around the world, not least here in Britain. And this is uh, following that same playbook. Look, these students, we've just got to say it, they are racists. They are racists. They are radicals, and the fact that they pose as anti-racists is simply a Trojan horse for the oldest form of bigotry and racism, which, of course, is anti-Semitism. Uh, their minds are addled by exposure to TikTok, which is greatly influenced by the divisive Chinese uh, regime, which is trying to use it on the soft matter of our students' brains. Uh, they're swallowing this stuff whole, this you know critical race theory stuff, uh, the, uh, the, the kind of uh, remnants of Soviet propaganda during the Cold War. And they're turning not just against Israel, but against liberal democracy as a whole. You know, these are the people who march uh, you know, in the streets and attack the statue of Winston Churchill and the British flag and the cenotaph and our police, as well as Israel. They're coming for the Jews, really, as the most vulnerable expression of our liberal democratic way of life. It's a radicalism, it's pernicious, is based on racism and bigotry and we need to start calling it what it is and uh, putting pressure on universities to clamp down what about and in a moment i'm going to speak with aaron keller who is himself jewish well i assume he's jewish he's part of a movement of jews in the uk seeking to end their community's support for israel's what they call israel's occupation and apartheid um I'm sure Aaron's going to say, well, this is a bit weird, isn't it? I, I'm a racist, what, against my own religion? How, how does that work when there are Jews that support this position? What would you say to them, Jake? Well, I mean, my book, which came out just before October the 7th, is called Israelophobia. And that really is the latest version of the oldest hatred, because during the 20th century, Jews were hated for their race. Before that, they were hated for their religion in the Middle Ages. But now they're hated for their national home. And it allows people to say, look, I'm not a racist. I've got a Jewish friend, some hard left fringe uh, Jewish Jewish character, like the, the chap you've got on, uh, on your show today, who's able to articulate a view which is contrary to the vast, vast majority of Jewish people and our history and culture. Uh, and Israel, as now as the Jewish national home, is now the target, the new target of anti-Semitism. But it can hide. It can say, look, I'm not racist, even I'm Jewish. But it's still the same old bigotry, the same old lies and tropes, such as apartheid and so forth, which are directed at the Jewish national home as a proxy for Jewish people as a whole. And people on the hard left, like your other, uh, your other interviewee, uh, I'm afraid, are giving cover to this pernicious or latest form of anti-Semitism, which is hiding in plain sight, is infesting our campuses in Britain, as well as obviously in the United States. Can you not be, though, I mean, if you're, look, if you can't have the hump and be a protester uh, at university, you can't do it anywhere, uh, Jake. I think we all know that. It's a, almost a rite of passage. Many of these people will say, look, we, we happen to disagree with what is happening it to uh, in Gaza, we happen to think that the uh, Israeli response is disproportionate. We think the death toll, uh, we can bicker about numbers, but there is a death toll there, speaks for itself. So what what is so wrong in having a protest to highlight that? Well, look, I mean, if that was the real motivation, then sure. And I'm not against, obviously, free speech or free assembly or protest in general. But what I would like to point out is that on these marches, there are never any calls for peace. There are never any calls for the Israeli hostages to be released. And there's a lot of support for Hamas, who, by the way, are just the same as Islamic, as Islamic states, who have carried out suicide bombings and stabbings and other acts of violence on our own shores, on our own people. Uh, so, you know, it's all very well to dislike violence and to criticise Israel and think that it's gone too far. If that's your view, you're perfectly entitled to express it. But in these protests, they're tipping over into anti-Semitic radicalism that sides with the jihadis, the like of whom have killed our own people in Britain, above uh, a beleaguered, flawed and real democracy that's fighting for its life in the Middle East. Jake, thank you for your time. Uh